So I want to talk about two main things today. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about a lot of technical stuff that we should focus on and some non-technical stuff. And when we're talking about the future of technology, the biggest word that probably comes to your mind immediately is AI, right? AI, AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, AI, the big buzzword. And truly, it has been changing the, in the industry, especially kind of even how we value it. You know, back in 2019, when I joined college, AI machine learning was the word, the term that a lot of like the cool kids use, where it's like, oh, I'm doing some AI project. I'm working on this machine learning project. I'm doing machine learning research. Or I'm working on this like AI team at work. And everyone was super excited. But now it's kind of like, instead of it being like an exciting thing, it's more of like a baseline thing. Like if you're not doing AI, you kind of suck, you know? And so it has been changing, especially since about like the end of 2022. I think that's when ChatGPT became a really big thing in university. And that's when a lot of people have started saying that, oh my God, AI is going to replace software engineers. Computer science degrees are no longer worth it because AI is changing the industry and everything is just kind of going bunkers. And a lot of people have especially like reached out to me being like, oh, is technical degrees even worth it? Should I even major in this? Should I even become a software engineer? Does it even matter anymore? And to all those people, my answer will come throughout this talk, but in short, yes, it is still worth it. You see, like when we're uh, looking at technologies like ChatGPT, yes, it is revolutionizing the way that we work. It is changing things. It is like we can literally put a prompt in and get out a whole code file. But it's not to the degree where it can replace software engineers just yet. And in fact, it's taking a long time to get there. You see, we had ChatGPT coming in November uh, or coming into prevalence November, December 2022. And then uh, people were like, oh, computer science is not worth it because it can do your whole assignment for you. Uh, software engineers can get replaced so easily. Then early on this year, do you guys remember Devin? Do you guys know Devin? Devin was uh, the announcement of the first AI software engineer. And basically what you could do is give it a prompt. It'll design, code, and test everything. So pretty much everything that a software engineer could do it could do. And once again, everyone was super scared of the implications of it. Like, well, what's going on? And then very shortly after, it was debunked. Like, that, that demo was very heavily exaggerated, um, and it was just a terrible onset. And then recently, I've been seeing this thing called Cursor AI. Do you guys know what Cursor AI is? Yeah, pretty much you can kind of give like a design of a website, and it'll like pretty much code everything out for you. So it kind of eliminates the need of like any front end software engineers. And I've been seeing a lot of people saying, oh, software engineers are out of jobs. And you know what's even like the, the, the worst part about all of this is as AI has gone into prevalence, the software engineering job market has taken a tank. And a lot of people think that just because two things are true, one is a cause and effect, which is not true whatsoever. In fact, the reason that the software engineering job market has been pretty tough for internships and new grads especially is an economic correction from what happened during COVID-19. During COVID-19, or I guess a few months after COVID-19 hit, the Fed started pumping market into the tech scene and companies started over hiring. And naturally what goes up really fast has to come down. And so this is just a simple correction of what is going on, not necessarily a cause and effect of what's happening. You, you see the, the, the difference? One is an economic issue, not a technical issue. Now, the thing is, uh, AI has played an impact in career-wise, though. In fact, uh, I was actually asking this one Apple Google, Google recruiter a couple weeks back, why is it so hard to get an interview nowadays? Why is it so hard to hear back from companies when I apply? And he said, well, you know, AI has changed the landscape. You know, back in, back in the day, you would just apply to many internships and you would probably hear back from recruiters. Now, anytime there's a job posting out there, within like two minutes, you see hundreds of applicants. How? Because there's AI that's scraping the job market and it's basically pumping all these applications in uh, to, to these things. That's why within two minutes, you can see hundreds of applications on LinkedIn or on these different job sites. So what does this mean for you and me, or I guess you guys as young professionals, how do you sort of navigate the situation? Well, the first thing is educate yourself. And by educate yourself, I mean, first of all, the base layer is be a consumer of AI. Learn how to use the products, 
actually learn how to use ChatGPT properly, learn what prompt engineering is even about. Because I'm always of the fundamental belief that you won't get replaced by AI, but you'll get replaced by someone who knows how to use AI very well. Let me give you an example. Uh, ChatGPT has a lot of limita limitations. One of them, for example, do you guys know the word strawberry? How many R's are in that word? Three. Three, right? You, you guys sure it's three, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Um, if you ask ChatGPT this question, or at least a couple weeks back, I don't know if they fixed this yet, but if you ask ChatGPT how many R's are in the word strawberry, it would actually tell you two. Does anyone know why? Well, the reason being is the AI has certain limitations right now. Right now, when you feed it a word, it does these things called tokenization and pattern recognition. So the word strawberry can effectively be broken down into, you can have two different tokens, the word straw and the word berry. And immediately, when ChatGPT reads it, it, it reads it in as, as a stream and tries to produce a result right away. And so it sees the word berry, it immediately recognizes it. Berry, blackberry, blueberry. Oh, two, two, two R's, so that has to be the output. And so it, th there's limitations when it comes to AI. It doesn't get certain things right. So if, uh, if it can't answer, answer some of these simple questions, how on earth are mega scale companies gonna be using this one technology to replace their trillion dollar product? It, it just simply can't happen. And that's how we can avoid when people are avoid getting fear mongered when people say, oh, AI is gonna replace software engineers. But instead, it does make for an excellent tool like when it comes to speeding up the programming. You guys ever use Microsoft Copilot? If you haven't, I encourage you to try it. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them, but it would be nice. Uh, basically, it's where you can literally like write out a comment, hey, I want a function uh, where it does X, Y, and Z. The comment, and you put the function header, and then it'll actually code up the entire function for you. That's how AI can actually make you a better software engineer rather than replace you. That's how you can be the person who learns how to use AI rather than being the person who gets replaced by it. A simple example, uh, back, back in the 90s when the internet was kind of going through its boom, right? Uh, a lot of people were, so some people adapted and some people didn't adapt. Do you guys remember Blockbuster? You guys know Blockbuster? Um, well, they were basically like this physical uh, store in which they sold movies. They were, leading the market in the movie scene. They, they were doing really, really well. Then, a couple years later, came down Netflix. Netflix, they weren't doing as well at first. In fact, I think 2011 was a really rough year for them. But now, they are like literally the number one movie streaming platform. Why? Because they actually adapted to the internet. They actually adapted to streaming services. This, no one actually goes to physical stores and buys movies anymore. Similarly, Eventually, no one is actually gonna go write their own code anymore. They're gonna become really great prompt engineers. Now, that doesn't mean your computer science degree, learning to code is useless. You need to be technically apt in order to actually see these things, how to prompt the code, how to look to, to, to see like how to debug things because ultimately there will be some mistakes. Ultimately, there will be things that you need to correct. So that's how we can actually take advantage of this AI product. And AI is ubiquitous. You see it in literally everything. Uh, you see it like within Instagram right now, there's Meta AI. Obviously there's ChatGPT, Google Gemini, so many different tools for you guys to use. So take advantage and start using them now as part of your degree. The second thing that I wanna also talk about, like I mentioned, that's like the technical side of how we can take advantage of AI because it's kind of changing the workplace. The second part I wanna talk about is the non-technical side. So a lot of people ask me, what is the difference between a good software engineer and a great software engineer? Does anyone have an answer for me? The math. The math? Okay. Communication. Communication? Adaptability. Adaptability? Anyone else? Speed. Speed, interesting. Yeah, these are all really good answers because at the end of the day, it is not about the code that you write that will differentiate you from being a good software engineer versus a great software engineer. Truly, it's all the soft skills. It's all the other stuff that you do outside of your job. In fact, when you join the market as an entry-level engineer, you're gonna be writing a lot of code, 
and doing a little bit of meetings, a little bit of design work, a little bit of all these other extra things. Then as you grow up the ladder, you become a mid-level and then a senior level software engineer. You're gonna be doing a lot more design and very little coding. Why? Well, one, you become faster, you become a better coder, but that's actually not what will accelerate you. It's all the other stuff that you do. How much do you get involved in design? Do you have a customer-centric mindset? Anytime that you use a website or web application, do you just, are you just a simple consumer of it? Or do you look at the, the color scheme of it, of the interactive components behind it? Or, you know, like McDonald's, they are uh, gold and red colors, right? Why? Because it attracts kids from a very young age and so they can capitalize on that market very easily. These are all small tips and tricks that you need to be observing. So anytime that you become an engineer, anytime you even work on a simple class project, always think about how is the user gonna be using it at the end? Because you can have a truly a bad product with an amazing design, people will still watch it regardless of like the, the, the functionality. As long as like it looks clean, you, you can win. But vice versa is not true. If you have a really great product, but a terrible UI, a terrible design that no customer would even wanna smell next to, you, you, like you have nothing going for you. So design is very important. Then we got communication slash leadership. So this is where obviously when you are working anytime, whether you're a student or whether you're uh, like on the job, you always need to communicate your wins. This is a big difference between actually like when it comes to university versus uh, the company, how they kind of grade your performance. In university, you hand in your assignment, they give you an A, B, C, or D, right? You pretty much get your GPA and obviously you shoot for a, a high, a 4.0 GPA, right? But on the, on the job, you pretty much just keep doing your tasks. No one will vouch for you. No one's gonna be like, oh, Sajad, he's a great student. Oh, Ali, you're a terrible student. No one's actually gonna be saying that. And, or actually, they might say the terrible side, but no one's actually gonna see the upside. So what you have to do is you need to vouch for yourself. You need to be noting down all the accomplishments that you're having. This will actually help you out while you're a student itself to always keep noting down the, your accomplishments. Anytime you do a cool project, post about it on LinkedIn, post about it on Twitter. In fact, a lot of people who are struggling to get jobs, that's one of the biggest hacks. Post about the work that you're doing on LinkedIn. Be loud. In fact, I was talking to this uh, one uh, technical manager at this one company, and he said he's gotten his past two jobs just because he talks about all the projects that he's doing on his Twitter. And then the founder of those companies reach out to him based off of the, the stuff that he's doing. Because why do I have to evaluate you for a technical interview? Why do you have to apply to my company if I already know that you're this amazing candidate? You know? So be very loud about the stuff that you're doing and show the world about the, the things that you're accomplishing. And that'll help you translate when you're actually on the job. And you'll actually, like anytime you do a task, you need to talk about it, mention it to your manager, get feedback from other people. That's a huge, another big thing. You get feedback when you post about things online and then you can iterate and just become that much more better. So overall, I want you to kind of like recap a little bit. Learning about AI will help you become a better software engineer. You'll be able to do more projects. You'll be able to code up very quickly. Especially that app that I was telling you about, Cursor AI, it can help you develop a front end just like that. Then you gotta translate that into your non-technical skills by actually talking about those projects, sharing it with the world, getting feedback, and showing you what you're about. And that's how you can become this holistic software engineer and really win in the tech world. Thank you.